about the internet of value at Ripple, we're thinking much bigger than just cross-border payments. It's kind of like Amazon with rare books in the early days. Just this market happens to be a $10 trillion market. We are at a historic turning point. Said in the past that you are doing for money what email did for communication. Moving the whole revolution forward. There's trillions of dollars parked around the world. RP. There are possibility that Ripple could take over Swift one day. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of 24 Hour Script. Let's get right into today's video. BlackRock, Ukraine, the IMF, an interoperable level playing field is being set up behind the scenes as we speak. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode. This is going to be a hardcore factual video that you will not disagree with. The events that are taking place right now are all pre-planned. Where do we even start? First, I want to show you a brief little clip from uh, CNBC and we'll get into the full video at the end, but they're confused about why BlackRock is getting into Bitcoin now and especially when the SEC is anti-crypto. Just take a listen to how confused they look. They're pretending like this is a surprise to them. Of new Bitcoin ETF offerings recently, uh, including from BlackRock, even though everybody knows the SEC yeah. and Gary Gensler is completely hostile to the idea. and Everybody said, well, they're going to say no to a Bitcoin ETF, just like they said no to everybody else. But I'm wondering why now? Does, yeah, well, what is what, why, what does BlackRock think they're going to get out of this effort? And then we have the head of the IMF, okay, Chris Talia Georgieva, talking about interoperability among CBDCs. They're all speaking the same language. Take a listen to what she says, and majority of you guys probably know what I'm gonna play right after what she says. That if we are to be successful, uh, CBDCs could not be fragmented national propositions. To have transactions more efficient and fairer, we need systems that connect Countries, in other words, we need interoperability. Uh, and for this reason, at the IMF, we are working uh, hard on the concept of a global CBDC platform to trade and to manage risks. And my colleague, uh, uh, Tobias Adrian, will talk more about it uh, later. Uh, central bank digital currencies are not constructed to be uh, interoperable. Interoperability between central bank digital currencies is very much there needs to be interoperability globally and even in a world of cbdc's you still need interoperability to to solve that. it has to work interoperably with anyone anywhere ladies and gentlemen i cannot stress this enough and then she refers to tobias adrian he's sitting right here director of the imf we have brad garlinghouse we have christine lagarde we have Hong Kong Monetary Authority of Singapore. We have the UAE Saudi Arabian Monetary Authority. Ripple is pretty much balls deep in everything here in Hong Kong, in the UAE, within the IMF. Ladies and gentlemen, go ahead and smash that like button if you guys are seeing what I'm seeing. And then prior to that, we know Christine Lagarde was the head of the IMF. Not much to say there. Okay, now let's get into the whole BlackRock and Ukraine war. Do you guys remember the BlackRock recruiter that got busted? Talking about how they, you know, pay off politicians and senators and how he even went on to say war is good. Take a listen. Do you have any um, thoughts on the Ukraine-Russia war? Yeah, I mean, I, I do have thoughts. What are, what are they? Yeah. Ukraine is good for business. You know, right? I'll give an example. Russia, Russia blows up Ukraine's grain silos. Price of wheat's gonna go mad up. War is real f***ing good for, for business. It's exciting when shit goes wrong, right? BlackRock manages 20 trillion. It's incomprehensible numbers. And everything that he says makes perfect sense because the headlines agree with him. BlackRock CEO Fink agreed to coordinate Ukraine investment. BlackRock chief says investors ready to flood Ukraine. Zelensky BlackRock announced new investment initiative to rebuild Ukraine. Folks, I can't believe that some people are blind to this. People have no idea what's coming down the pipelines with crypto assets and a new financial infrastructure. There are less than 
3% of the world's population in crypto. It is a very, very small market. So for you guys tuning in every day, educating yourselves, packing your bags, give yourself a pat on the back because you're doing this for yourself and for your future. Some people are scared of it, but you understand what's actually going on. Crypto market is not going anywhere. You can't just magically create another crypto market and get retail investors out. That is just not going to happen. They're late to the game. They want people out. They're going to cause a ruckus to do so. And then they're going to get in. And then it's going to be a multi-trillion dollar asset market. And I want to say this again. It will be bigger than a hundred trillion dollars. And that is a fact, ladies and gentlemen. That is a fact. So now we're going to get into the CNBC broadcast. This one's going to shock you. It's, it's really funny listening to them talking about BlackRock and Bitcoin ETFs, spot ETFs and the SEC when we already know what's going on in the back end. It's not a conspiracy theory. This is not a conspiracy theory. Everything that we cover on this channel, it's not conspiracy theory. They're all facts. They said ETHgate was conspiracy theory. Take a look. It's ETHgate is absolutely massive, the amount of evidence that's behind ETHgate. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, I really do appreciate every single one of you guys. And before we get into the CNBC broadcast, I'm going to bring this up. The XRP pendant, the yacht party, the 24 hours crypto yacht party. If you guys are interested, link in the description down below. You will be added onto the list. The XRP yacht party, 24 hours crypto details will be sent to you. The way you get on the list is with a purchase of an XRP pendant. It'll have the date and value of XRP engraved on the back. Some of you guys may be wondering, why are we paying for a pendant to get on the yacht party? There's more to it. This is commitment. I am organizing a six-figure event where I need commitment. Like I said previously, I'm not putting together an email list and I'm not going to say, here guys, sign up. So I'll be flooded with hundreds, if not thousands of individuals saying they're coming. I need your commitment. One XRP pendant is one spot. If you're planning on bringing your whole family, it would be four. Okay. Emails will be sent within 48 hours of when it's going to happen. The de more details on it. And if you guys have any other further questions, you guys could email info at 24 hourscriptocom 24 hours crypto yacht party link in the description down with Below with a purchase of an XRP pendant. And now let's get into this CNBC broadcast of them acting all confused about what's going on about the Bitcoin ETF and why BlackRock is coming in. All ETF Maven here. We have seen a spate of new Bitcoin ETF offerings recently, uh, including from BlackRock. Even though everybody knows the SEC yeah. and Gary Gensler is completely hostile to the idea, and everybody said, well, they're going to say no to a Bitcoin ETF, just like they said no to everybody else. But I'm wondering why now? Does, yeah, well, what, is, what, why, what does BlackRock think they're going to get out of this effort? You can't get away from your favorite subject here, can well, you? I, <laughs> people ask me about it, and I don't have an easy answer for it. Yeah. it, 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 it I, I always think something. I'm missing something here. I, I think you're right. I think your sniffer you think usually I'm missing is something. No, no. I think you're you're onto something. I think your sniffer is always really pretty good, Bob. If BlackRock all of a sudden has filed for a Bitcoin ETF that's not futures based, it's spot Bitcoin. Right. Okay. And Ginsler said, no way, that's not going to happen. But at the same time, they're bringing together some pretty good partners from a custody standpoint. They've got. Bank of New York Mellon, they've got Coinbase, right. they've got uh, an agreement, a surveillance agreement with NASDAQ to help with the security aspect of it. So they're trying to show the SEC that they're putting all the safety uh, things, uh, provisions in place to give them the confidence, to give them that acceptance of their application. I think the big thing we know, as Gensler said, we're not going to do anything there unless we have the exchanges regulated, and Coinbase right. is not regulated. But that's my question. Do you, 
do you think this is going to change their mind? I can't without the without the clear regulatory authority, and they're not getting a bill through Congress. So now he's just resorted to to essentially suing everybody. He's he's trying to regulate uh, by uh, essentially by by filing complaints. Yeah. Um, I don't well, see how this changes. If anybody can get it done, would you would you bet against BlackRock? No. You know they're they're the behemoth, right? right. They're, they're the That's why I'm thinking. I still don't quite get. Yeah. I don't. How are they going to change his mind? I mean, if they can partner with Coinbase and say, "Look, you agree to get regulated," what would that do to your business? Imagine institutional investments, just one percent allocation to Coinbase, and what that would mean. It, it, we're talking about a, a lot of money. Yeah. So there are a lot of pe people like you that are saying, huh, is this finally the time? Is it going to happen? We're going to follow this very carefully, folks, because, again, they're not going to waste their time. Yeah. Trust me, yeah. BlackRock isn't, if they don't think they have some chance sure. of doing something here. We started building RippleNet with the thesis that crypto liquidity would eventually be able to support robust global payments, large payments. RippleNet was designed so that customers seeing the benefits of our fiat-based network could flip the switch to ODL once the market was mature enough. And this is exactly what's happening. Flip the switch. I think what we're building has, you know, it's solving a real problem. And I think all of the tokens, my advice to anybody would be understand the utility. If there's real utility and there's real value being delivered to a real customer, there will be value in the token.